Hi, Booktube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video even though it's not nighttime, it's afternoon. Um, I was thinking last night trying to change my my how I make videos. I mean, I tend to do the same thing every time I make a video and I thought, well, I'm sh I should shake things up. I should just uh, turn the camera on and say, hi, Johnny, this is Booktube and immediately go into the books I have been reading or the books I have found at thrift stores and because I but then I think everybody has their own way of making booktube videos. And um, like last night I was thinking, well, I'll shake things up. But I mean, I'll stop writing in my diary, my paper diary. I thought, well, how can I stop writing in my diary when I've been doing it since I was 18 years old? I said, well, you know, I'll stop buying books. I'll stop reading. I'll just sit and and pray. And I thought to myself, "You're gonna st stop buying books. You're gonna stop reading." My wife says I always go to extremes. I I never, if I'm gonna do something, I always immediately go to the extreme. Well, I'm gonna just stop reading completely, or I'm gonna stop getting. I'm gonna just completely get off the internet, or I'm gonna. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop eating, or I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna start walking five miles every day, and and uh, you know, it just goes on and on. I just don't think in moderation. Uh, like this morning, I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna get up this morning, and I'm not gonna go to the computer and look at Yahoo News and check my email and watch booktube videos. I'm just gonna get up in the morning, make a cup of co make some coffee, and sit at the dining room table, and just wake up to a quiet morning. You know, read the Bible, look at my sermons by Joseph Irons, and not get involved in the ways of the world and all the mess and all that stuff. But I got up this morning, I sat here, and then after a while I went to the computer and I looked at my email, I looked at the news, and I watched some booktube videos, and it's just, it's like sometimes you think you're out of control. That's what I'm trying to say is that, am I really in control of myself? I mean, sometimes uh, I'll say to myself, uh, I'm just going to eat just when I'm hungry. And so then I, I'll eat breakfast, and then a couple hours later, I'll eat maybe uh, something light. And I'm full. But then, Soon, you know, even though I'm full, I'll walk over into the kitchen and open the refrigerator and start eating, even when I'm full, when I don't really need to eat. Uh, and I'm saying, then I say to myself, now wait a minute, you just said you were just going to eat when you're hungry. You're not just going to eat just for the sake of eating. So it, it's like, it's like I'll say to myself, I'm not going to buy any more books or CDs. And then I find myself going to the internet. Oh, that looks like an interesting book. I go to Amazon, I order it, and I buy it. Or I come across some music I really like, and all of a sudden, boom, I bought the CD. I push my PayPal, and I have it sent to me. And, I'm, I'm, and I sit back and say, now, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like I'm out of control. I mean, where is self-control? Where is... Where have I gotten hold of myself? It's like you, you do you eat without thinking, you buy without thinking, you're consuming constantly. It's like it's like 
you're out of control. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of bothers me. But then I think to myself, well, if I just moderate, you know, you know, I don't know. Where is self-denial? That's what I'm saying. Where do I practice self-denial? Where do I, the Bible says we should fast and pray. Well, I told myself, well, Carol's going to be gone six days, and I'll fast and pray. So then what I do? Well, this, this morning I went to the grocery store and spent $92 on food. Well, that's what I always do. When Carol goes to visit one of the kids, or next month she'll go off for a couple of days with some girlfriends. They do every year in September. I, meet the, I go to the grocery store and I buy everything that I like to eat. So that's why I thought I mentioned what do what what do I buy myself when Carol's gone and uh, I go to the store? I buy hamburgers, I buy hot dogs, coffee cake, ice cream, lasagna, frozen lasagna, frozen frozen uh, fish. I buy milk. I buy mocha milk creamer for coffee. I buy. Uh, I buy some some vodka in orange juice and I buy bread and I buy hamburger buns and hot dog buns and and I buy potato salad and seafood sal salad and I buy big a big pound of roast beef sandwich meat <laughs> and uh, ice cream I got myself some uh, I forgot what kind of ice cream I bought. And that's what I do. And so here I was thinking I was going to fast and pray. And I go and I buy all this fattening food. Potato salad and seafood salad and hot dogs and hamburgers and pasta and ice cream. And, and so it's like, you know, I just, and I wasn't even, I just did it. And so this morning, also when I went out to the grocery store, this is where books comes in. Well, I'm not going to buy any more books. I mean, I go down to the lower level, and there's no room to walk around anymore down there. It's just books uh, everywhere, stacked, and I can't find anything. It just drives me insane. I mean, I'm out of control. I mean, it can't continue. So I go to the grocery store, and what do I do? Well, the first thing I do, I stop at thrift stores. Now, somebody asked me in England, do, what is a thrift store? The thrift stores are not used bookstores. Thrift stores sell used books. They sell used clothing. They sell used stereo equipment, used furniture, used everything. You can buy glassware, lamps coffee tables, refrigerators, old computers at thrift stores. Thrift stores sell everything. Not only used books, but they sell you know, toys, used toys. They sell used gym equipment. They sell picture frames, uh, paintings. They sell music, CDs, DVDs. That's what thrift stores sell. Used bookstores are totally different. Now, used bookstores, as I mentioned to the guy in the UK, are going out. People are buying all their used books online now. Or they're going to used book sales, or they go to the library and check them out. Unfortunately, thrift used bookstores are disappearing. Independent bookstores that sell used books. But you can go online and you can buy them or you can go to thrift stores. But it's getting really hard at thrift stores to find used books because even thrift stores now are selling their used books online. So, but to be really completely honest, I don't need any more books. <laughs> I, have, I have every book that I want and more. And like I said, I'm a Christian, so most of my reading should is the on, centered on the Bible, studying the Bible. Now, you can't find really any 
really good solid used Christian books. I usually have to buy those new. And in Grand Rapids are all the major Christian publishers, Baker, Erdman's, are the, and uh, so if I really want anything new, I can get them from Baker or Bookhouse. I mean, Baker, Bookhouse, or Erdens. But I do buy from Amazon those books, my Christian books, because they do have good discounts. But right now, I have so many Christian books and so much to read that I could really stop buying books right now and have enough to read to my dying day. But I did stop at thrift stores, and these are the used books I found. Before I went to the grocery store, I stopped at Goodwill. I stopped at Bibles to Mexico and Action House. And at Bibles to Mexico, what did I find there? Oh, I found this book, Touching the Altar, the Old Testament for Christian Worship, edited by Carol M. Beachell. This is by Erdman's. Erdman's is, is, their headquarters and their publishing is in Grand Rapids. And Erdman's has one of the best Christian bookstores, I think, you could find anywhere. They have everything. Uh, years ago, when I was teaching Sunday school, when I was really into studying the Bible for teaching Sunday school class, I'd go to Erdman's almost every weekend and spend hundreds of dollars <laughs> at Erdman's. But now I have everything that I want. I bought so many books when I was working, Christian books, uh, academic books. That, and I still buy a lot of academic books, but not as much as I did when I was involved in church. So I got this one. And then what else did I get it? Uh, let me see. Oh, I found this book. 100 Names for Love, A Stroke, A Marriage, in the Language of Healing by Diana Ackerman. I collect her writings. I didn't have this one. She wrote The Zookeeper's Wife. She's written all kinds of books. And this is a memoir about when her husband has stroke and his recovery from brain injury. I just got it because I have to have all her, all her books. So then after that, I went to Goodwill. And I found these at Goodwill. This is a biography on Churchill, The Unruly Giant by Norman Rose. I have some other books around Churchill, but I don't have any Churchill biographies that I can think of. And this was only, you know, a dollar. And uh, so I, and it, sometimes you look at Churchill biographies, they're massive. This looks like something I could manage if I want to read a biography on Ch Churchill. And then I think the other books I found at Goodwill. Now Goodwill, right across the street from Goodwill is the grocery store I go to. So if I have to go to a grocery store, before I go to the grocery store, I always stop at Goodwill just because it's right across the street from the store that I usually go to to buy food. So I found this memoir. It takes, let's take the long way home of Memoir of Friendship by Gail Codwell. I collect memoirs. And I found this memoir, Out of the Family, by Wendy F. Farley. Oh yeah, I, f I found this book at Bibles in Mexico. This is called The Vampire Tapestry by Susie McKee Charnas. Uh, I, once in a while, if I see a good vampire book, uh, horror fantasy, I get it. Uh, then at uh, Goodwill, I found this Dorothy Parker collection, the collection of Dorothy Parker by Modern Classics. I had this already, but I like the cover. It was only 60 cents. Then at Action House, which Action House is a thrift store. They, they, they uh, have a food pantry for the poor. They provide furniture and clothing and all kinds of household necessities for the poor people in our community, but they also have, they sell used books. And I found this one, The Rot Rottler's Club by Jonathan Cole. 
This is a novel. He's a British writer. And then I found this. Uh, I found this one at Goodwill. This is Markel Mekel Burgerkov. Burgerkov. I can't pronounce. He's a Russian. I had this already. This is the Master and the Margarita. This is was translated uh, Russian by Richard Pever and La Larissa Vonga. Skies, I can't pronounce it. I have this already, but I like this Penguin Classic Edition. I like the cover. It's only 60 cents. And then I found at Goodwill, The Tragedy of Lyndon Johnson. This is American History Biography of Lyndon Johnson. I wanted to read about just certain things about Lyndon B. Johnson. It looked, it was only, it was only 50 cents. Then at Action House, I found this historical novel by Ian Pears, Pears, The Instance of the Finger Post. And then lastly, I found this hardback edition. I have a Penguin edition of this, Ecclesiastical History by uh, Euparus. It says he lived in the, the Middle Ages, I think. Uh, so it's like early church history. So those are the things I found just before I went to the store <laughs> to buy all the food that I don't need to eat. Well, I do need to eat now, you know, but I tend to over, I, I suppose I kind of comfort myself when Carol's gone because I miss her so much that I kind of just eat and I kind of just overindulge <laughs> I don't know. So those are the th things I found. Oh, I did get in the mail yesterday those three volumes of complete my set of the sermons of Joseph Irons. I got volume seven, volume eight, and volume nine. It's amazing that that they still had these because I I can't remember when I bought these other ones. You know, I bought them. I bought these years ago, and yet they still had these other three volumes. So now I have the whole, the whole set. So that's what I was reading this morning. While I was going to try to read, Carol got up at 3:48. We're around three o'clock, and I didn't get to sleep really, so I'm kind of tired. So I wasn't able to read this morning, and I was kind of bummed out. I got up this morning, and I was talking to the ghost of Rudy our dog who died of cancer in last month and so I was talking to the Rudy ghost and feeling feeling missing my wife she did call when she landed in Denver she landed the plane landed at nine o'clock our time and uh, it was like 7 30 their time so yeah so today Andy and Beth close on the house and they move in Tomorrow, they move into their new house. And so, yeah, so it's kind of exciting. I wish I could be there. You know, I was feeling kind of bummed when Carol called from the airport there in Denver. It was only a two hour flight. I'm saying to myself, You're such a wiss. You could have flown two hours. I mean, I want to see our grandchildren. I want to see Louisa. I want to see Margaret see Jack. I want to see Andy and Beth and spend time with them. It just gets me so disgusted with myself that I can't get on a plane. That I fear death. You know, I, that's why I fear dying. I mean, I'm up there on that plane and I, there's no way of escape. But then, you know, I could have gotten killed just driving to the store this morning. I could have died, you know, choking on one of my pills this morning. I mean, I don't know, it's, it's all irrational, you know what I'm saying? I do irrational things, you know, I eat irrationally, I buy books irrationally. I mean, I ex in my existence seems irrational, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem have any kind of logic to it. I'm just out of control, stuffing myself with seafood salad and stuffing myself with hot dogs and stuffing myself with books, stuffing myself with music, consuming, getting fatter and fatter and fatter. 
you know, it's, it's just crazy. And here I am talking into this camera. I mean, I'm just completely nuts. So as far as my diary, oh, this morning I'm on page 767. And one thing else I do when Carol's gone, I can burn incense. I can burn my incense up here. Uh, Carol is allergic to incense. She can't stand incense. So when she's gone, I crank up the music and I burn the incense. I get the hot dogs, you know, I get the food, I get the books, and I just chow down and I go nuts. And then I feel like a big, huge pig. But hey, I'm living high on the hog in the last days of the American Empire. I'm just as decadent as Donald Trump. But my hope and my faith rests in the cross of Christ. So, anyway, I thought I'd make this video since I got nobody else to talk to except the booktube world. And hey, until next time, which might be soon because hey, like I said, I'm going nuts. So, hoping you're having a good day. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Thank you just for being out there in the booktube world. Bye.